Welcome to Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. I'm Richard Dugan, your host. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to come your way and uh, bring you uh, the, the conversations that we have with our guests as we bring you new paradigms for a new world, giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. And of late, uh, and to me, this is a good thing, we have had uh, a number of guests who have been returning to our uh, program to share more about uh, what it is that they're doing in terms of uh, changing the world for the better, making their lives better, making the lives of people around them better. Uh, and of course, the word better is subjective, obviously, but um, uh, I honestly believe that it is possible. Brett Cotter is my guest, and uh, he is with us to talk about uh, something very special. We'll get be diving into that. The website, while we are here, is uh, stressisgone.com. That is one of the main links. There are going to be a lot of others as well. But we're going to talk about um, a lot of different things here on the program. But in particular, a program that uh, starts on the 8th of April. Uh, it's a three-month training, uh, becoming a certified uh, meditation teacher and uh, a trauma specialist. Brett, thank you so much for joining us again. It's great to have you with us. Richard, it is so great to be back with you. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And I also have to uh, uh, thank you uh, for some insights you have given me over the over the months, especially uh, with things that uh, I and many other folks are dealing with. Just in general, it's it's life. It's just what it is. And uh, we we are are uh, like I said, I'm I'm grateful for for the input uh, and uh, remembering what it is that. Uh, that we are here to do. And that is to, like I said, make the lives of those who are listening and watching better, make the, our lives better, more, uh, hopefully, hopefully more prosperous and, um, uh, and bring about a, an opportunity for people to, uh, to basically transform their lives. It's kind of the phrase. It's, it's sort of the phrase of, of, of this time of this period, if you will. Um, it's been used, of course, for years and years and years, but uh, it's one of the things that um, I think that we are working towards is to learn how to transform our lives, our minds, our hearts, if you will, which changes, of course, the material, our bodies, uh, and reconnect with that part of us that unfortunately we've been taught from an early age we don't need to reconnect with we can connect with this person that person this place that place this book that book and um so i i i think that uh, that's kind of where we'll begin but talk to us about this this training program once again that does start on the 8th of april and the uh, folks there are all kinds of uh, 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 ways of getting there. You can certainly go to stressisgone.com slash, if I'm correct here, uh, uh, Brett, SIG-meditation-teacher. Is, uh, is that a link, one of the many? Yeah. So if you go to stressisgone.com, you'll see on the very top, it'll be a quick link right to the meditation teacher uh, trauma specialist certification program. But that's okay. uh, probably the easiest way to get to it. Yeah. All right. And um, uh, just to let our listeners know that there are going to be segments of this program that you're going to kind of wish you were watching the YouTube video, because um, we're going to um, we're going to be sharing uh, the the uh, screen, or I'm going to be sharing my screen with Brett, and uh, we're going to uh, make that happen as well. So uh, let's talk about this training program that you are are, are making available. Uh, a little more specific. What is it uh, that uh, we're going to be uh, uh, being taken into, shall we say? Yeah. So this is a three month immersion for anyone that's in the mental health field that wants to add an amazing mindfulness tool to their tool belt. Uh, for any parents that are worried about their kids with anxiety, depression, suicidal ideation, um, any veterans or first responders that want to be able to be there for their brothers and sisters when they're going through a time of crisis, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel for this moment in our history, right, as a race and how, you know, suicide has been 
on an uptick since the late 1990s with an all-time high in 2023 of 50,000 people lost. And um, the numbers are getting worse, right? Mm. So I decided to create a program that certifies you to be an expert intuitive meditation teacher that understands how to use the stress is gone meditation process to resolve trauma, fear, and pain, which balances our mind, body, our psyche, and our brain. And um, this kind of really aligns us, you know, mind, body, and spirit when we get out there into the world. Uh, so we're not so afraid of it. Now, the other components to this program, it's not only a meditation teacher certification, it's also a trauma specialist certification. And I actually train you in the technique that helps individuals let go of the fear and pain inside of old traumatic memories, right? And if you recall some of our last interview, um, our original traumas from childhood are at the root of all of our stress. So when we go into those, you know, those old memories and we release all the fear, the pain, the anxiety and the panic and the shame and the guilt, then we are much less stressful in the environment our resiliency goes through the roof for stress because we're triggered much less. And then I'm also going to be training people on the suicide prevention protocol that I train vet to vet crisis counselors in right now. And that is just a beautiful technique that allows anyone that's struggling in your life with suicidal ideation to come to you and you get to handle that situation with compassion, presence, and clarity and it just allows the individual to release the emotional pain inside of them and to reground themselves so it's safe to be in their own skin again. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited about this three-month certification. It is going to be a journey. Um, there's going to be about 48 hours live with me and the training uh, cohort uh, going through uh, 12 weeks, 12 modules of training. And I'm just super excited about it. Mm. Well, I, I think that it's it's certainly something uh, that we we need to take a look at because for people who feel as though not being here would be better than being here, um, there there there's there's obvious there's an obvious disconnect in their minds and hearts, if you will, and then whether that's because they don't have community which I know can be a huge, a huge factor, right? I mean, when you don't have people that you can count on, people that you can go to, to get support, I, I encourage people wherever they live to start building a network one at a, one at a time. And again, the network isn't exclusively for you to get help, well, although that's part of it, it's so that hopefully you can be there for them as well. If, if they were to need uh, the, the, the facilitation, if you will. So, so it's a, it, it's a, to me, that's the whole purpose of community. We're all there for each other. And uh, that's, that's part, I think of what, what you're talking about and what you're training now, your website, which is stress is uh, says an awful lot. Just, just in the name, stress is gone. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? I tell you what, if I could just eliminate the stress. Um, I mean, back in March of 2023, my blood sugar spiked and stayed up and up and up. And I did everything. I did everything right. And I'd had it normal up to that point. And then I started doing some reading that, oh yeah, stress can actually elevate your blood sugar. And of course, the process is a little more complicated than that. You know, your stress affects your hormones, your hormones then affect this, and, and, and it's a chain reaction. And so that leads me to, to this other observation that, oh my gosh, I am just blown away, and not necessarily a good way, by the number of commercials I see for medications for high blood sugar. And it's starting to dawn on me that this isn't just about diet. It's just not that they're all eating candy bars and drinking sugared sodas. It's that our lives or I shouldn't, I don't know whether life is better or worse than it was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. I mean, when I was a kid, all I know is that 
whatever it is, for whatever reason, we have lost the capacity to process it in such a way as it doesn't bother us and then impact the physical body. Is that a, I, I, Which would you say it is? Is it that life is much more difficult now and i.e. more stressful? Or is it that we have, we just, for whatever reason, we aren't, we, we don't have the tools to process. So that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what I feel is that uh, human beings are creators. As we go through life, we, sub we subconsciously store one stressful experience after the next. That negativity deep inside our repressed memories starts to create things because it sparks our emotions and our thoughts. When I said human beings are creators, what I mean is we are creating moment by moment the reality around us. As the stress builds up inside of us, our emotions become overrun with stress and so do our thoughts. So what happens next? We are throwing stress on the canvas of the next moment, the next moment, the next moment. So we're caught in a catch-22 in that we are unconsciously creating more and more stress as a race all around us and deep inside of us. Just because we were never taught how to vent our emotions, how to let go of the subconscious stress, how to identify it, and how to release it. So the whole stress is gone philosophy and method is based on a few simple concepts. The stress we repress creates more stress. Mm -hmm. We can identify that repressed stress by assessing our routine stress, okay? And the more we release, the more we will be at peace. So let me just dive into that second part where we can assess our routine stress to identify the repressed stress. If you're having an issue with your spouse, let's say you're a man, you have an issue with your wife, repeated stress over and over again, you're actually duking it out with your mother through your spouse because our unresolved issues from childhood are repeating on us in our family. And then often they'll repeat in our professional life, in our careers. Mm. And this was really true when we used to work in an office, right? The world has changed a lot over the last, you know, four years or so. Yeah. So we used to work in an office. There were people in that office that reminded you of your dad, you know, it brought up the same kind of emotions, would trigger you like your little brother did, you know, um, because the universe is always conspiring to heal us. And it wants these deeper subconscious issues to come up out of us. We just don't recognize it for what it is. And then the reactions get the best of us. And then we end up pushing each other's buttons and stressing each other out. Where your spouse that's stressing you out is doing her job perfectly because she's showing you, subconsciously showing you exactly where you need to heal. Okay. So the big change and the big transition is from where we are now to owning our reactions. Everything I feel is coming up from within me and it's my place to heal. That's your stress at work, your stress at home, wherever your stress may be, even a random stress, somebody cuts you off on the freeway, that stress, you own it all. And the stress is gone method teaches people how to break free from inside the reaction. So once you feel your stress is really triggered, you're angry, you're upset, you're, you're sad, whatever it is, and then you use some of the stress is gone method techniques to release it within a minute or two, and you feel the stress release from you, that's when your stress is gone. Okay, and that's why I named the company that, because it contains the tools for you to release stress in the heat of the moment and to also go back into the past and clean stuff up where we had that so subconscious memories and those deeper fears. So it's kind of like the tools are the keys to the castle of the subconscious mind and to cleanse the heart from all that built up pain, fear, and anxiety. And right now in the state of our society, I feel really feel that this is super important that we take ownership of our own issues because you'll find from going out there looking for help whether you're looking whether you're going to the bar um a yoga class um a meditation class a therapist group therapy you're going to find that the stress often comes back right so it's mm. all about you might not have the money to go to the bar you might not have the ability to drive to the therapist you might not have the ability to go to that meditation class 
How about the magic pill existing deep inside you? How about it's just a process of reconnecting with yourself so that you could feel safe in your own skin again mm -hmm. and release all that old fear? So that's really what the whole purpose of stress is gone is, and especially with the name. Yeah, it's it, it, it's something that, again, we've been taught from the beginning that it's it's not within us, it's without us. You know, the doctor is the one that's going to help you. The therapist is the one that's going to help you. The teacher is the one that's going to educate you. <clears throat> and over the years with some of the programs I've been through, they use the word facilitator and they describe it this way. I am here to facilitate. I'm not going to do the work for you, but I'm going to guide you through a process. And that's really what, what you're doing too. You're facilitating. Uh, it's, um, I mean, you could, I mean, there are people in our lives that we would call mentors and that's what they're doing too. Uh, you know, I can't do the work for you and you can't do the work for me. We have to do our own work, but we've been taught that it seems as though someone else is going to do it. And I use the doctor example primarily because it's like we put all of our trust I, I still remember when I was diagnosed with type two diabetes and the doc says, it's going to be a long, hard road, Richard. I said, no, it's not because I know how I got here. Now this was in 2000. I said it was the pandemic because we all went to comfort foods and that was uh, ca carbs and sugars that, that elevated. And I made this, I made the decision and boom, it came down. So I did that. I would have to I would have to give the doctor credit for the motivation in the sense that he said it's going to be a long, hard road. I, I'm not a real fan of long, hard roads, unless, of course, I'm on vacation traveling somewhere, <laughs> you know. Um, so it seems, as, it seems to me, uh, Brett, that, that that's sort of the first hurdle is we have to get through that, uh, that old story, that old message and recognize it's not true. They are there to help. Obviously, if I break my arm, I want a doctor there to set it and, and put the cast on and so on and so forth. But in terms of what we're talking about here with the stress, rather than dealing with the symptoms by taking this pill, that pill, the other pill, I could get rid of the stress. Stress is gone and the symptoms go away too. So we get rid of the stress and the fear by embracing it. Right. So mm -hmm. the second people start to feel really upset, stressed out, depressed, I have them touch the tension in their body because that's where all the subconscious memories live. The body's like a library for everything we've ever experienced and a ton more. The body's like a library for hundreds, if not thousands of years of reactions, fears, and issues. So this body's like that library. So wherever you feel the tension when you're stressed out in the heat of the moment, that's where those memories live. That's where those emotions live inside your body. So I have people touch it and connect with it because when the calm cells in your hand touch the tense cells in your body, there's an equilibrium that happens energetically. Mm -hmm. And that usually takes a couple of moments. Then I have people start breathing deeply and slowly. That deep, slow breath and the attention on where the location of the tension, you're actually breathing into the tightness in the body. You're delivering airflow and life force to the cells that are scared shut, right? The cell membrane think, thickens when a cell gets into a fight or flight reaction. And then it starts to open up when it starts to relax. So the mm -hmm. airflow can get in and out so the cell can breathe. So after a few moments of touching the tension, breathing deep and slow, the cells start to breathe again. Now we start to express all of our emotions, okay? This is where the person says, right now I'm feeling really upset because of blah, blah, blah. Right now I feel this tension inside my heart and it might be related to blah, blah, blah. And you just let a stream of consciousness express from you. And I call this emptying the tank. You say everything you could say about the feeling that you're feeling right in here when you're stressed out. And then you reclaim your true identity which is something that I call using a freedom statement. And then you just say, right now I unlock and release all the tension and the anger from my heart, or if it's sadness, whatever it is, you just call it out exactly what it is and where it is. And mm -hmm. you say, right now I unlock it and release it from my body as I breathe deeply and slowly. And I reclaim my true identity. Now, when you do that, it's like the icing on the cake on this four-step process. I call it the four steps to freedom. 
Mm -hmm. right? You have, you have touch, breathe, express, and receive. And that's a simple process. It brings the whole healing process home. And you could do that anywhere, right? If you're having an argument with your spouse, just take a five minute breath break, walk away from the situation, let them know that this conversation is super important to me. I just want to um, take a quick breath break and then come back as clear as I can. And usually our spouses will respect that, okay? Um, if they won't, then just have them say whatever they're going to say and then say, okay, now I just got to take a little breath break, be back in five minutes. And that's the way, you know, we approach this stuff. Yeah. You know, another interesting phrase that that I have found, and I don't want to say that works, it's, it's, not a, it's not that kind of phrase, but that shows that I am concerned, that I do want to resolve and obviously de-stress the situation, if you will. Uh, and it has to be meant. I mean, you just can't say it to say it. And that is uh, that I, I, I hear you, but even more importantly, I see you. Mm. And I have used that phrase uh, a few times when my wife was really, really upset about something. And, and I said, hey, look, I, I hear you and I see you. I do see you. And I, I do because I... Uh, it it pains me to see her in distress, but I can't take it away. She has to go, she has to do the work to do that. But at least she knows that there's somebody there who cares. <clears throat> so this you bring up such a beautiful point. All of our pain wants to be seen and heard. Okay, mm -hmm. think about when you were a young kid and you were in the most pain. You were by yourself. You were in your yeah. room. Maybe you were being punished. Right. You felt all alone. That pain of being all alone and that when we're upset, right? And it doesn't matter what age you're at. You know, we're, we're, most of us are adults that are going to be watching this. It doesn't matter if, if this is something that's happening between you and your children, siblings, aging parents, your spouse. Whenever someone is upset, they want that pain to be seen and heard. Whether the person is angry, sad, uh, whatever it is. So I love what you said about, you know, I, I see you and I hear you. And that right there disengages the defense mechanisms because you just jumped to their end goal, which is being seen and heard, being recognized. And what I found is when we are really present and we recognize somebody's pain, the pain starts to like unlock and release. It's almost like it it's given some free space and our pain wants to leave. Our mind holds on to the pain. Every cell on the planet is pre-programmed to return to homeostasis. Our cells want to let go of this pain, but our minds don't know how to let it go. Mm. So that's the kind of um, the topper on the bottle, right, is the mind. If we could just unscrew the mind, open up and be present with the pain, then we start to release it. And that's such a beautiful thing that you brought up. Again, you know, I see you and I hear you. Because that's the first step of becoming present with somebody's pain, seeing it and hearing it. Yeah. And as I said, you have to mean it. You know, if you don't oh, mean yeah. it, they're going to they're going to pick up on that, you know. Uh, and um, I, I think that that as we move forward in this process, a, a, again, it goes I, I still think it goes back to community. We need to develop a community around us. Uh, I I can honestly say that in addition to uh, some folks uh, through the station I work for that I'm connected with, uh, mother's, I have my mother, I have my elder sister uh, that uh, I talk with on a, a fairly regular basis and share some things that, you know, they go, really? You're kidding. You know, well, first of all, I know that they see and hear me because you know, they're reacting to what I'm saying. They don't actually have to say the words, but they are supportive from the standpoint that, that they will even, uh, I don't want to not pass judgment. That's not the word I want, but they will, they will take a look and say, well, but Richard, you know, you should, you should try this or try that. And, you know, in, in terms of sort of offering advice. Okay. Now, I can either take it or leave it because it's always going to be my choice. 
as to whether or not I want to resolve whatever the situation is. But at the same time, the relationship that I have with them doesn't change. I think that that's, that's also, I think, a big key in that seeing someone and hearing someone means that you are not passing judgment. You are recognizing and observing what they're going through. You're there for them, though you don't do the work for them. Um, and, uh, they are still, they're still in your community. They're still in your network. They're still your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, regardless of, of what they may offer up and vice versa for that matter. When you're listening, it seems to me, uh, Brett, that, that, that same, shall we say, courtesy of non-judgment, <laughs> it needs to be spread on both from both sides that that we don't we don't we don't pass judgment uh, because that's not going to help yeah that's um actually at the top of our suicide prevention protocol Mm -hmm. uh less is more listen empathy and sympathy and there's no judgment there's no interrupting and i feel that we are you know we have an, an epidemic here with you know the suicide rates in our country and you know for different populations you know it's it's worse for young African American men, for the LGBTQ community, mm. for kids from age ten to fourteen, think about that for a second. That's that mm. that's mind blowing. Um, you know, there's just veterans, um, retiring first responders. Um, you know, there's so many different you know categories where this really affects people. Um, men over seventy five, people that are in construction and mining communities. Um, you know, it, it's just a very, um, sad situation. And I feel the bulk of the problem is we don't give each other the space that someone else can openly express their feelings. Mm-hmm. That is the problem, yeah. right? Right there that we don't openly express our feelings because mm-hmm. we all have feelings. And if you, if you put the lid on it and you don't express it, they all compact and that emotional pain is from like 50 stories of emotional pain getting compacted into our chest, right? We have to let it breathe. We have to touch it, express it. And as we do that, all that tension starts to unwind. That pain starts to unlock and release. And it all comes down to having another set of eyeballs looking at you so that they are present with you, like you said, without judgment. And it's just the freedom to express how we feel. We have to get back to that um, because I feel that that is the most important shift in our society and in humanity, holding space for each other and feeling safe enough to express whatever is coming up inside and having the other person sit there in non-judgment and just human compassion Mm -hmm. and remembering that less is more, listening, empathy, and sympathy. Brett Cotter's my guest. The website is uh, stressisgone.com. Uh, the extended uh, link is stressisgone.com slash SIG dash meditation dash teacher. We'll be linked to that second. Uh, we'll be linked to that second uh, uh, website there, uh, Brett, so that uh, folks can go straight in and, and, and get more information on this program that starts on the 8th of April. There's a there's an element of this that I wanted to touch on as we continue here on Tell Me Your Story, and that is, um, please don't escape my mind. Stay 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 in there, will you, please? Um, I th- this question comes up on a particular subject. Now we're not going to go into this subject, but for the sake of our conversation. I want to bring up the issue of immigration. Now we could go down that road of all of the things that have been talked about, but I only have one question to those who are all bent out of shape about it, as well as those who are wanting to come across our borders. Why? Why do they want to come here? Why do you want to come here? What's the reason? for your wanting to come here. So when we're talking about releasing the stress or let's, let's talk about the suicide prevention program. 
Is that a valid question to ask of someone who is suffering from the suicidal thoughts and so forth? Why? Is, is that part of the, I hear you, I see you when you ask that question, or is that, is that something that, that is not, uh, how relevant is it, I guess, is the question. It's not the question why, because they might not even know. Okay. Right. So what we're doing is trying to get them to a place where they feel safe enough to open up and tell us everything. So we use open-ended questions, just like, tell me more. Mm-hmm. I want to hear everything. I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. This is what's most important to me right now. Please tell me more. What's the hardest part to talk about? These are all different questions that open up deeper bubbles, right? Of the problem. What's your biggest fear about that? What does that feel like? And then, and then you cycle through those questions again until you get to the person's core fear. Once the core fear is on the table, then we use the connecting and the encouraging statements, and then we bring them through the method, the stress has gone method to release the tension from the body. Mm -hmm. So um, we've had profound results with everyone that we've trained so far, uh, the vet to vet crisis counselors and peer specialists that we've trained in the stress has gone suicide prevention system. Um, it's amazing from the first training, because they're able to start to use a technique from the first training. And um, it's just, it's a beautiful technique because it's just one human being being there for another one and just creating a safe space just to open up and let everything come out. And I, I do hear the difference. I do hear the difference. It's, it's, it's asking the same, same thing, but in such a way that will actually help them to feel much safer, a much more comfortable in answering the questions the way you phrased them. Uh, so, you know, it just seems to me like that's one of the, one of the issues that we're, we're dealing with in, in terms of uh, um, uh, associating with one another is we're not really listening. Uh, you've heard the question. So how are you doing, Brett? Fine. Really? You're fine. Are you really fine? You know, um, so tell me how fine are you, you know, and so forth and so on. Instead of saying, uh, I'm, I'm struggling, mm -hmm. but it's not just the question. It's, are you willing to answer? Are you, do, and, and, it, does that seem to be one of the biggest uh, uh, issues is that people just don't feel, they don't really feel safe because they're afraid that maybe this information will be used against them, so to speak, used against them in a court of law, that kind of thing, or the court of public opinion. It's one of the reasons why it disturbs me to no end when I, uh, uh, you know, it's one thing to watch these entertainment programs where they talk about the new movies are coming out and then this project's working on this and this guy's doing that. But when the criticism comes out about an individual, I don't care what, Kate Middleton and and she had a surgery and and now did this and all the speculate what how is that helping her number one and why is it any of your business number two uh, but it, it it just seems like um, maybe that's the fear is that if I open up and I share this it's going to be on the evening news so a lot of people that are affected. Um in the worst way, you know, with suicidal ideation, let's take veterans and police officers, right? They've had to hold in all their anxiety, their stress, their depression while they were um, active, because if they express it to their superiors, they're going to be pulled off the duty. Um, they won't be redeployed if that's what they want to be. Mm -hmm. um, often veterans or active duty military, they want to, you know, keep on serving, being active. And um, they can't, they can't open up to their superiors and continue doing their job, right? Um, sometimes a police officer might be taken off the street and put on a desk job for six months or nine months. Then what happens there, all their buddies give them crap, right? So there is like no room to show feelings, weakness. You have to have your guard up the entire time. And that kind of eats away at us from the inside out because the pain's not going anywhere. People are pushing the pain down further and further and further. And 
That's why we have a lot of ulcers and digestion issues. That's from people pushing their emotional pain down, 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 down. If you have pain in your solar plexus, that's when someone else took your power away or you gave it away. Pain in the chest is uh, anger and heartache. So pain in the throat, if you store your tension in your throat, that's when you knew what to say and you did not say it. Mm. Pain in your back is when you don't feel supported. If you have pain on the right side of your back, you don't feel supported by the masculine. If you have pain on the left side of your back, you don't feel supported by the feminine. Pain in your shoulders is that you've taken on an, an absorbent amount of obligations. Like you feel everything is literally on your shoulders. So the body holds a story. It's just a matter of, are we listening to our body? Are we understanding mm. what our feelings, where they're coming from, what it's about, and are we letting it out? That is the key to just let it out. You don't need to figure stuff out. All you got to do is just open up and vent the tea kettle, right? So what happens if you don't vent the tea kettle? It just burns over and, and you, you're going to have a ruined tea kettle at some point, right? You got to vent it. Yeah. We have to yeah. vent it so that we don't boil over and melt, have a meltdown, right? So we, yeah. we want to be able to do that. And then we start to become more stress aware so that we actually take our key, our tea kettle off the burner when we don't need it on the burner. And we see like, okay, when I go over there, that's really stressful. When I'm hanging out with that person, it's really stressful. So then you figure out what is that stress teaching you, right? So then you address all the feelings, and let them come up and out, and then you break free from that pattern, right? All the patterns in our life, the stress patterns are trying to show us where to heal. They're like just pointing fingers. Like you want to heal right there, that inner pain that your child brings up in you that your supervisor brings up in you, that this situation, that's just pain to open up to, to feel and express, and then reclaim your true identity. Mm. It's all learning to me. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's learning. Is there a certain element of uh, um, reprogramming, deprogramming uh, kind of situation where we, we need to... Um, stop listening to the, the, the old stories, the old messages, um, and then find a source such as yourself and uh, stress is gone.com uh, to write new stories. It's been said that, uh, for example, on a, on a computer hard drive, unless you uh, use a magnet to erase the hard drive and you use software to do it, the data is still there. It's just been, uh, and until it's written over, it's there. It's invisible to you, but somebody else can use another program to recover it. So how do we get rid of it? How do we literally delete it so that we can put down new messages that are more beneficial for us to keep from I guess you can't really keep from stress, but you can learn how to what manage it, cope it, cope with it. What what's the best word to use there? <laughs> so you bring up a really cool topic. Um, the other day on the frequently asked questions on the meditation teacher uh, sales page on the website, I did a few paragraphs on the differences between EMDR and the stress is gone method. So EMDR is a, is a process that someone will go to a therapist for to reprocess their trauma, okay? And it has to do with talking through the traumatic memory from start to finish, and you're doing certain things. You're moving your eyes in certain ways. Sometimes there's tapping, and that activates the right and left part of your brain, okay? So they call this reprocessing. So what we do in the stress is gone method, and if we could tell it in a story like this. Have you ever had a relationship that started off great and then it got toxic? Mm. And it could be with a relationship with a friend, um, a supervisor, mm. um, a love interest, you know, a, a committed relationship, romantic relationship. Just think about that. The, let's mm. use the romantic relationship example. You're in love. It's amazing. Nine months goes by, it gets toxic. It goes down like a blaze of glory. Now, what happens when it gets toxic? That person went from the positive part of your brain, right? That's being tantalized and stuff. And all of a sudden, the image of that person gets transported into the amygdala where our stress reaction lives. And every time we think of that person, see that person, we get stressed, right? And 
Same thing happens for them. What we do with the trauma is we take the memory out of the um, amygdala and we put it in different places in the brain by allowing the source trauma to come up to the surface I allow the person space to express all their feelings. So everything that was keeping it trapped in the amygdala, now we're just expressing our feelings. Now we're creating new neural nets and new electrical pathways in the brain of, around this memory. Then for really traumatizing memories, I have the person do these affirmations, which call in more energy to reclaim their true identity to break free from the temporary. Now that memory, let's say that memory now let's use the example of a memory of when you were a child, a traumatic memory. That part of you, those emotions are trapped in the temporary, in the past, inside your body and inside the psyche. Your cells don't know the difference between past, present, or future. It thinks everything's in the present. So whenever you have that memory triggered or recalled, your cells are freaking out like it's happening right now. Mm -hmm. So now we start to express all the feelings right? And I guide the individual in doing that and create a really safe space to do that. So now they're emptying the emotional tank that that memory was holding. And then we call in some higher self affirmations to unlock and release all the tension, all the fear, all the pain and reclaim your true identity, which is life force energy. Now the memory gets full of life force energy and is no longer sitting in the amygdala. It is in different parts of your brain. We activate the right and the left and we start to activate new thoughts, which bring about new feelings that create these new neural nets around the memory. Now the memory is sitting in a totally different part of your brain with totally different energetic circuitry throughout your brain. And that's just a rewiring, a, a reprogramming, okay? And it changes everything. But the key is expressing all the emotions that were trapped inside the memory. Once we open up, once we open up the mouth, and we go on a stream of consciousness. That is the gift and it's free. The magic pill is inside you. Just let it express, let the pain express. You know, when some pain comes up and you feel it so deeply inside you, like I could never say that. I could never, you know, you never want to feel it. Mm -hmm. And all of us at some point in our lives said, I'm never going to feel that again. Like it hurts so much. Something happened so much, usually like in our teenage years. And we're like, I'm never going to let that happen to me again. I know that happened to me. I know that happened to a lot of people that I work with. And we the tough part is we have to go into that feeling again. You have to be willing to go into that feeling again to break free from it. Mm -hmm. So in the heart of our fear is all of our freedom. And that is a key component to the stress is gone philosophy. I'm Richard Dugan. You're listening to Tell Me Your Story. We're talking with Rhett Cotter. He is with Stress Be Gone. Stress Be Gone? Stress Is Gone. Stressisgone.com. And there's a special program that's coming up April the 8th that uh, starts on the 8th. Uh, it's a three-month training program, a certified meditation uh, teacher, as well as trauma specialist. And there's also a, uh, another program that's uh, related to uh, suicide prevention. And Brett, uh, uh, what we want to do is, is uh, offer people the opportunity to uh, find out more about uh, this, um, this program as well by going to the website, which will be linked to. And you, if you're looking at the YouTube uh, program, uh, Brett is going to share with us some things that uh, uh, that I think uh, I think are going to be pertinent to uh, you folks getting involved in this particular program. So, Brett, I'm going to let you uh, take it away. I think that you do have the capabilities now of sharing some things. Uh, and then, uh, folks, again, if you're uh, listening to the podcast, I would recommend going over to YouTube and picking up the interview uh, as well. So, uh, Brett, what, uh, what, where do you want to take us in this particular po point in regards to this new program that starts on the 8th of April? Yeah, so what I would love to do is share with you a little bit more about the, the program. Mm -hmm. And just working on my little screen share here. Sure. So what I would like to do is show a little bit of the suicide prevention protocol, mm -hmm. right? There it is. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the pages, right? And you see the word veterans here. This is one of the pages that I train the vet to vet crisis counselors in. So you see from the beginning, typically when we are experiencing or we're with somebody that is really struggling with a deep depression, um, especially people that we love, and their suicidal ideation evolve, we get triggered immediately because it's a very stressful experience. So the first thing I train 
our crisis counselors in is how to release your own tension real time when people are telling you things that's like the worst case scenario of what you never want to hear. Okay. So you could see when we greet the individual or start the conversation, it's calm, engaging tone. Then the key component is less is more, listen, empathy, and sympathy with no judgment, no interruptions. And the person will only get into a better space if they know that you care. And I think, Richard, you said that earlier. They must know that it is authentic and that you care. And the more that you could listen and be empathetic and sympathetic, the more they're going to feel safe to let go. So what does that mean, right? Um, let's say you're with your child or spouse, someone that you love that's going through a really tough uh, time, really depressed. They open up to you that they don't want to be here anymore, right? In this protocol, you would start to say things like, I'm right here for you. Please tell me more. I want to hear everything. Then they start telling you stuff. If the person is sad, you would show some empathy by saying, oh my God, that sounds devastating. If that happened to me, I would feel the exact same way. I'm right here for you. I want to hear everything. Once they open up a little bit more, once they, once they start to wind down, then you could ask, what's the hardest part to talk about? Now they start opening up another bubble of pain. P typically people don't do this. They'll let people talk enough just to like let some steam off or some pain out. What we want to do is help the person empty the tank, help them express all the pain that's inside their mind, body, and spirit. And these open-ended questions here on the left-hand side under developing rapport, where it says help the veteran open up, right? We have these five go-to statements that help the person open up. What's the hardest part to talk about? What's your biggest fear about that? What does that feel like? And we circle through these questions until all of the core issues are on the table. And then once the core issues on the table, we go to um, encourage and connect. We're in this together. I'm not going anywhere. I'm right here for you. I'm truly honored that you would share this with me. I know this is so hard to talk about. I'm amazed at how well you're expressing all this, right? And then we transition to like a breathwork technique. Um, do you feel any tension mm -hmm. in your body? After someone has expressed their core emotional pain, they're going to feel emotional tension in their body. Usually it's the chest, the solar plexus, the stomach. And then you ask, would you like to do a breathing exercise to see if we could release some of it? And then we start to guide people through the stress is gone method to release that emotional pain. Okay. Now, crisis line operators and vet to vet specialists and, you know, peer support specialists, we also have to be able to assess risk, right? These are the typical questions to assess the type of risk that the person's in. Do you feel like you're in danger of harming yourself or anyone else right now? Do you have the means to do so? Have you made a plan? Have you started planning? Did you tell anyone? Okay. Now there's certain if then statements here, depending on how they answer those questions, right? So you could see that this, this is one page of the training protocol mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a booklet, but this is the main components to the conversation that a parent can use, um, a veteran can use to learn how to talk to their buddies that might've called them with suicidal ideation. Um, this happens to veterans more than you think, because I work with a, a lot with veterans and the ones that I'm working with, they're like, hey, my buddy called me last week, right? One guy told me last week that his friend came up to him. They went somewhere with their daughters. Their daughters were doing some event and they sat down and he just said, please explain to me right now why I shouldn't end it all this weekend, mm. right? So veterans, you know, retiring, um, first responders, you know, I, I went through some of the pockets of individuals and, and the populations that are really at risk the LGBTQ community is four times more likely to attempt suicide than their age group peers. Um, you know, the risk factors just really get alarming. So it's understanding how to handle the conversation, which is most important to me. Um, if we understand how to handle the conversation and we become more comfortable with it, with those go-to statements, then we have a chance of helping somebody get through it. 
And now I just wanted to share a little bit about, you know, the website. If you go to the very top, you'll see meditation teacher training starts April 8th. And then here is the page. Become a certified meditation teacher slash trauma specialist. Help people find peace. Meet the deepest needs of humanity with presence, peace, and clarity. You have really good um, introductory video right there. So I just showed you a little bit of the um, suicide prevention protocol. This is another major tool that I am going to train people how to use inside this three-month training, which is the traumatic memory release technique. That's when you're actually able to gently guide someone back into a traumatic memory and release all the pain from it so that they feel like that emotional pain from their chest, their stomach, their solar plexus, wherever it was, they're freed from it. And that stress that was triggering them every day becomes less and less because we dealt with the issue at the source. These are a bunch of different um, testimonials. And, um, but basically, what I'll be training people to do is how to become an expert meditation teacher, how to help people with trauma, and how to handle suicidal ideation. Those are the three main things. And this is how the program's delivered. Three uh, live trainings per week. You have to make one of them. Um, we'll be in three meditations a week live. You have to be in one of them. And you get a master class. I'm going to have office hours every Friday for people that maybe never taught meditation before, but they want to teach to certain um, demographics. I know people that want to teach meditation in inner city schools, in prisons, to veterans. So I show you how to do that because I've done all that. And this is the kind of the syllabus, right? Week one is the introduction to the stress is gone meditation, which uses our signature tone, verbiage, and techniques to take people into a very deep subconscious state quickly. Once we're in that state, we merge the person's subconscious fears with their own divine essence and their own life force energy, freeing the body and the subconscious mind from tension and fear. So here you see in week three, we take the meditations deeper into the heart space. Week four, we start with the TMR technique, helping people heal trauma. We take that all the way to week six. Week seven and eight, that's a suicide prevention protocol. Week nine, we talk about, and we're bringing people through the um, our system to awaken their intuition and to help them trust their inner guidance. This is very important for a meditation teacher. I feel the best meditation teachers can tune into the group that they're serving in that moment and channel a guided meditation that is just for that group, just for that time, just for that moment. And that's what you learn how to do in the stress to gone meditation process. Teaching in high stress environments. I also do a week on that. This is a picture from um, a, a yearly workshop that I do with the Mothers of Veteran Suicide. This was one of the pictures from the Zoom. And then crystallizing your career path. I also have almost 30 years in staffing. So I help people develop their resume, really identify what they want to do with this training and with their career, and then put together a simple plan to execute on it. And then the 12th week is being a shepherd. How do you make yourself available for the peoples that you're impacting their lives, right? Um, that's the biggest issue that I hear from people today that come to me after going through one month trauma recovery programs with some even leading experts in the world mm. that just re-traumatize people. And the thing I hear the most is that it was an okay course, but it brought up a lot of pain. And then the instructor wasn't there to help me deal with it. So I am in this course for 48 hours live with you. And then you have 1800 hours recorded content from myself and my wife, Stephanie, who teaches the movement. So this is a beautiful, well-rounded program that is gonna help you let go of some issues because all the work that we do, we do it on ourselves first before we go out and do it in the world. And it's gonna train you how to be an expert meditation teacher, handle trauma and suicidal ideation. So if you are in a point in your life where you want to make the world a better place one person at a time, and you want to feel more fulfilled and do something meaningful, then this is the program for you. If you're into mindfulness and you want to be there for other people, especially when they're going through the toughest of times. To find out more uh, regarding this program uh, that starts April the 8th, you're going to want to go to stressisgone.com slash slash SIG hyphen meditation hyphen teacher. And we will have that link both in the video as well as part of the podcast so that you can click on it, go right there, and you can uh, find out more and sign up. Uh, although I would say uh, you, you've given us a good uh, 
a good uh, a, a beginning place to um, to make that uh, to make that happen. Brett Cotter is my guest, and you are listening to Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and Brett, I want to thank you for bringing this information uh, to us and and sharing uh, these uh, these insights as far as uh, how to uh, how to minimize, if not release this, well, release the stresses that we are experiencing. The, the thought that came to me as you talked about piling it on and stuffing it down uh, was a pressure cooker. My mother used to use one of those with the little thing that jiggled on top there. <laughs> Uh, when she was refry doing um, making refried beans, that was the first process. You put them in the pressure cooker, lock that lid on, put that little thing on there, and it would release the pressure over the time and cook those beans, and it would be really, really good. But the pressure was maintained at a certain level. And then um, when it was done, you'd pop the lid off, and the pressure was completely released, and all was well. And that's kind of what you're doing here is is helping us to to uh, release the pressure in that uh Again, uh, metaphorically speaking, pressure cooker. And I thank you so much for being with us here on the program. It's always great to be on with you. Thank you so much for having me, Richard. Awesome I do. Uh, with you. I do want to ask you those three final questions, but I also congratulate you on uh, creating what you have, uh, and that you and your wife are working together on this. Um, I was uh, sharing with someone just the other day that when my wife and I were doing things, uh, and we still do, but when we in the past would do things together uh, and there was this synchronicity and so forth, it was like magic. That was the word that I used as I believe that it was like magic when we would do that. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun too. So I, I, I think that's a fantastic thing that you and your wife are doing. Thank uh, you. I'm going to ask you those three questions. Uh, just a quick reminder, folks, that you are listening to Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. We are giving you choices and knowledge of those choices. To help make your dreams come true, we're here on Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m., Wednesdays at 9 a.m., and Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. And uh, we stream live at those times at richarddugan.com. Uh, we have podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Blueberry, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and many other locations. And we're on YouTube. Hopefully you were watching, as uh, Brett shared with us, uh, the, the basics of this program that starts April the 8th. And um, uh, we ask that you subscribe as well as uh, click notification so that when a new conversation is posted, you'll be notified and you can tune in. We also ask that if you can support the work we're doing financially, we would be gratefully appreciative. We have a PayPal account. It's there for your security as well as ours. And we also ask that you spend some time going within to that quiet, peaceful, calm, still place and listening to that still small voice. And uh, with all of that, uh, we uh, go to our final three questions and I'm going to ask you. And uh, I do that just because uh, well, that's my protocol. <laughs> Who is Brett Cotter? Hmm. It's a journey. <laughs> Brett Cotter <laughs> is a soul on a journey. That's all I am. Soul on a journey. Okay. What is it that gets you out of bed in the morning? My purpose. And finally, what was your best day? The day my son was born. Mm. Once again, Brett, thank you so much. It's really been a pleasure to have you on the program and we'll have you back again to continue this conversation. We certainly hope that folks will go to the website to find out more about this program. Once again, that starts on the 8th of April, three month training program to become a certified meditation teacher and a trauma specialist. We hope you'll go to the link that we have provided. And until our next broadcast, podcast, video cast, love to lol. Jeanette, I am still listening. Dad, continue to be happy because I am. To my dear friend Smokey, I'll see you on the other side. And to my friend Zorro, aho, aho. <laughs>